Thank you for joining us again for the Living Jesus Devotion. And we're finishing up um, the chapter or, or the whole book of John with the final chapter, chapter 21. Today we're going to focus on verses 9 through 14. Follow along with me, please. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Thanks, honey. And I think there are a couple of details in this mm -hmm. scene that, that I think puzzle people, uh, at least as I talked to them. First, the writer uh, you know, specifically mentions a charcoal fire. So yeah. that, that kind of detail there is interesting. And then he provides a specific number of fish, 153. <laughs> well, I noticed that, which I thought was really odd. Why, why do you think the author says that? Why is that in there? So I think that the first one's a little easier. It takes us back to that night that Jesus, that Peter uh, denied knowing Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, he did that while standing next to a charcoal fire. Okay. Uh, so really, it was the smell of that fire with Jesus right there that that would have taken Peter back to that night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that olfactory, the olfactory, 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 <laughs> old factory memory. <laughs> <laughs> you did a sermon on it recently, so yeah, old um, factory. <laughs> anyway, uh, and and I think we'll unpack what Jesus does with that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But um, but our but but for today, this 153 fish thing is um, is is a point I think worth considering because mm -hmm. people put people put different spins on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for some it points to the sheer volume of fish mm -hmm. uh, that it would that a net would normally hold. Uh, it, it was actually enough to feed a whole village, and wow. and that there was wow. much more uh, that that uh, that net would have normally held. Uh, and and others think that the number has some sort of code that that represents something there. Okay, well, which which way do you think it is? Which way do you lean? You know, I'm not going to deny that there are symbolic meanings to numbers. Mm, uh, sure. We find them throughout the Bible, yeah. and that's possible here, but probably not probable. Um, it would be the only time, really, in the Gospel of John where mm. that has is taking shape. A number means something like that, so I lean away from that. Um, it has a lot more to do with what we talked about yesterday, um, that, that with Jesus involved in whatever we're doing, it makes... His being there is what makes it flourish, and, and more than we'd ever dream of, uh, that we could do it on our own. It's mm. like something that Henry Blackaby wrote, and I know that he meant a lot to us at another yeah, church yeah. Uh, where, where we were uh, teaching about right. that. He said that God's always at work. He's not waiting for us, but he's inviting us to get on board with, with his work. Um, it's all his work. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so so the mundane stuff uh, that that we have to put up with, even that is you know God's at work with that, and that's why Paul, uh, to go to a different place in the Old Testament, describes it this way: consider it all joy yeah. uh, when we go through trials. Um, you know we have a front row seat really in seeing God do amazing things in this world. Mm -hmm. And again, it's it's recognizing that, and and this this whole chapter is written for a group of people such as ourselves, um, who are living after Jesus, mm -hmm. and just simply have to open our eyes and see that that Jesus wants to be part of it. And I think that's the best attitude to start each day. I know that for me, that's right. what carries yeah. me through the day. Um, just praying that God not just carries me through, but helps me see where He's at work. Um, because there's a lot of mundane things that go on. Um, you know, beliefs about gearing up every day, partnering with Jesus to, to do the work uh, wherever he's planted us. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, let's close yeah, in prayer. Sure. Jesus, we just thank you for inviting us into, into your work in the world. Um, and we thank you for the space where you've planted us and, and the gifts that you've given us. Keep us strong for the work 
and able and willing for the effort and, and joyful for the rich, the rich, rich harvest that you've planned for us to be a part of. And um, and in all of that, we just thank you um, for who you are. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, honey. And thanks, everybody, for joining us for another day of Living Jesus Devotions. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we continue this this wrap-up week in John chapter 21. Until then, have a blessed day and just recognize, keep on recognizing Jesus, uh, whatever He's doing in this world with you. Uh, it's a blessing. Thanks. Bye-bye.